batteries are a big part of the energy transition, and there are a number of competing technologies out there in addition to lithium ion, the dominant one. And I'm going to talk to Dr. Laura Lander, who is a postdoctoral research associate in the Electrochemical Science and Engineering Group at the Imperial College of London about sodium ion batteries. So welcome to the interview, Laura. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Look, let's start off. Sodium ion is not one that I'm familiar with. Maybe you could just give us a brief overview of what sodium ion batteries are. Definitely. So in principle, sodium ion batteries work very similar to lithium ion batteries. So um, you have the cathode, you have the anode, and the electrolyte. It just um, in contrast to lithium ion batteries, the, the chemistries are a little bit different. So instead of a graphite, anode, which you have in lithium ion batteries, you have a hard carbon anode, for example. And on the cathode side, also you have different transition metals, for example, you don't have the um, nickel manganese cobalt or lithium iron phosphate um, chemistries, which you usually have, but um, yeah, the transition metals are a bit different. But the working principle is practically the same. So what we're talking about is the cathode and anode are made of different materials than uh, in a lithium ion battery. And they're, they're more common, uh, easily found, cheaper. Those are the advantages? Um, definitely. So you don't need to use critical materials such as cobalt, um, graphite, or lithium in, in sodium ion batteries. So that's a huge advantage. And will definitely take a lot of pressure off from those, those critical materials. Um, I'm not quite sure if I would say they're also cheaper. For example, you have materials such as vanadium which um, also have their own disadvantages. For example, they might be toxic or I'm not quite sure about their cost, to be honest. Um, but for example, sodium definitely has a, has a big price advantage and also it's so abundant. So you, you can also avoid the kind of geopolitical um, issues that you might have with lithium, for example, which is very much focused in certain areas and certain countries. Um, right. Now, I understand that sodium ion batteries have a, a lower energy density than lithium ion, and that, I assume, uh, makes a difference in the kind of applications in which they're used. Definitely. So um, while energy density in lithium ion batteries is, um, is extremely important, for example, for applications in, in electric vehicles, sodium ion batteries for now might not have quite reached the same level. Although I have I have to say, I read an article the other day about peridium um, batteries, even um, over like um, having a higher energy density than, for example, lithium ion phosphate battery. So this is highly encouraging. But in terms of application, I would agree. I would say they're not made for EVs now, but they're more for applications where maybe um, a space is not such a problem. So for example, for grid storage applications, um, or also for smaller transportation applications, such as e-bikes or um, maybe fleets where you have only very short distances you need to, you need to um, drive. So it's, I guess it's more niche application for, for mobility, but certainly a, a huge uh, potential for grid storage. Well, let's talk about grid storage because I've interviewed a number of experts about, uh, about batteries on grid storage, but also other um, and other applications like pumped hydro and, and pumped air, that, those sorts of things. Are, are we talking uh, long store, long duration storage, or are these would be a shorter duration uh, that would compete with lithium ion? I would say I would definitely rather be shorter duration competing with lithium ion batteries uh, in this regard. And where are we at with uh, this application? Have there been uh, pilot projects? Uh, are they becoming, are they close to commercialization? Um, I think, I'm, I have to say, I'm not quite sure about the, the commercialization for grid storage applications, but as far as I know, um, the commercialization stage is rather in a, in a small scale area. So for example, we have Ferradion, which um, commercializes cells rather for e-mobility. Um, we, um, we have a French company um, which commercialized um, cylindrical sodium ion cells, but um, Tiamat, I think, which are also for smaller applications. Um, there's um, CATL, which announced the commercialization of sodium ion batteries on a larger scale. So hopefully when, when the production is scaled up and also the, the, packet, the battery packet packs becomes bigger, 
um, we, we see more sodium ion batteries in grid storage applications. But for now, for now it's uh, still lithium. Right, and, and I would imagine that the fast charging has got to be uh, an, uh, an advantage at the, uh, the grid scale. And I understand that they can withstand more uh, uh, discharge cycles as well. Yeah, definitely sodium ion batteries have a, have a longer, um, a longer life, lifetime than, um, than lithium ion batteries, which makes them highly advantageous. But I think still there's a lot of things to understand about sodium ion batteries, because obviously you have a huge lack in, in fundamental research on sodium ion batteries. So even though they have been discovered a very long time ago, I think approximately around the time lithium ion batteries have been first researched on, they had kind of a, there was a big hole where the research focus was mostly on lithium ion batteries. And so therefore sodium ion is a bit behind. Um, so I think there's a lot of, as I said, fundamental chemistry to be understood and especially like when we talk about interface reactions at the, at the um, cathode and anode with the electrolyte um, and to optimize those, um, those battery systems. I think you can still push the, the battery lifetime further. Just on that point, maybe for a, a non-technical audience, uh, Laura, I was interviewing an expert a few years ago, and he pointed out that you know the science of electrochemistry on a significant scale is really only 40, maybe 50 years old. And so a lot of these chemistries, uh, yeah, there, there's still a lot of a great deal of research to be done. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think also, especially when we talk about batteries and sodium ion batteries, which are a new technology, um, each chemistry interferes differently with the electrolyte and depending on how you use it. Um, and yeah, and each, each reaction can have such a big impact on the battery performance. So it's really crucial that you go into the, into the fundamentals of the, of the battery chemistry to understand what's going on and also how to mitigate the problems and to optimize the, the battery system. Now with the scale up of, uh, of battery manufacturing, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, investments announced recently in Europe. Uh, the North America is playing catch up, but then Pr President Biden, for instance, has prioritized a, a domestic uh, battery manufacturing sector. Uh, but China seems to be well ahead. And uh, are they leaders in sodium ion as well? Um, I would say for now they haven't been. I think it was much more uh, European venture, I would say, with Ferradion. Uh, I would say being one of the first to to commercialize sodium ion batteries, but I think they will catch. Well, they certainly will catch up on the trend, and I think also for them, I mean, even though they have quite a um, quite a monopoly on the lithium and and other battery materials, also for them, obviously they want to stay ahead of the game, and, and they have the they have the means to to produce sodium ion batteries on a large scale quickly because. In fact, the advantage also of sodium ion batteries is that um, the manufacturing process is practically the same as for lithium ion batteries. So you can just implement the, the, the sodium ion battery manufacturing in the already existing manufacturing um, or the production line. So it's a really easy transition. And so China has a big advantage also here. So just the last question on the, the electrochemistry, uh, given all of the applications that are going to be involved in the electrification of the economy, are we going to see many, many electrochemistries that fit, you know, niche applications where their cost or their safety or, you know, their other advantages that they have, as opposed to, you know, one big technology like lithium ion that dominates everything? I would say so, and I think that would be um, there would be a very good development because obviously now the pressure on lithium ion batteries is so high um, in terms of critical materials, for example, and cost. Um, it, it makes it rather risky to to put all our all our how would you say in English all our cards on this uh, on this uh, technology, and um, so yeah, definitely the the energy storage technologies will diversify. Um, research is also done on, for example, multivalent batteries where we have calcium, manganese, um, uh, sorry, magnesium and aluminum ion batteries, um, which also might fit into, into niche applications. And um, yeah, so we'll definitely see more, more technologies coming. There's, um, given that the range of applications is so, so large, there is no one technology, one fit for, for all. 
So I guess in the future, we definitely see more. But now, yeah. safety is a, is a bit of an issue. And I understand this isn't your primary research uh, uh, focus, but perhaps you could address it a little bit. And that, uh, you know, so we've seen lately, we've seen uh, stories about lithium ion batteries in electric vehicles that catch on fire. We've, I, I think I saw one the other day about perhaps a, it was in a, a utility uh, scale application in Australia where one of the battery packs uh, caught on fire. Uh, but I understand that sodium ion is less vulnerable, non-flammable, so therefore more safe. Yes, um, from, from what I understand, sodium ion batteries have a higher, um, yeah, right, higher resilience to, to temperature effects. They, they don't show any thermal runaway reactions. So that it makes them, makes them safer for applications, especially on a large scale. Could you explain uh, briefly uh, what thermal runaway is, please? Sure, a thermal runaway reaction means that um, when, you, um, when you overuse your, your battery or if there's certain, um, uh, yeah, certain usage conditions where your cell is starting to overheat, um, you kick off, uh, you kick off a, a chain of reactions, um, over, like going from one cell and propagating through, throughout the whole pack where you have the, the thermal runaway, which means um, your battery pack will catch fire at some point probably. Or worse, explode, yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, critical minerals. This has been in the news lately, uh, particularly over the six, last six to 12 months with the expansion of battery manufacturing capacity. Everyone's asking, well, where are the, the minerals going to come from for this? And could you give us a, an idea? Oh, and, and of course we should mention that uh, the raw uh, lithium as uh, I, I saw uh, recently has tripled in price. Uh, so what advantages does sodium uh, ion batteries have when it comes to critical minerals? Um, they don't use them. <laughs> so this is the huge advantage. Um, so in critical materials, uh, critical minerals we have in lithium ion batteries with the cobalt, uh, we have lithium on the anode side, we have the graphite. And um, obviously with the hugely increase, with the huge increase in, in battery demand, the pressure on those minerals will be Will be significant and this is also a big risk in terms as you mentioned already a cost risk for battery production and for the battery price and um, also the geopolitical tensions that might um, that you know, might be related to this and and the dependency on on other countries who have the monopoly on on those minerals so having an alternative battery chemistry which doesn't use those minerals for certain applications like large scale grid storage applications or transport niche applications um, will be a huge uh, advantage. So in, um, in sodium ion batteries on the anode side, you replace the graphite with hard carbon, just because um, sodium does not intercalate in, into graphite as in the same manner lithium would. And on the, on the cathode side, you, um, you have rather transition metals such as um, vanadium, titanium, manganese. So you kind of avoid all the cobalt, um, the, the cobalt related chemistries and obviously no lithium. So uh, given that the sodium ion uh, batteries are, are still under development, what are the top one, maybe two ch technical challenges that need to be overcome? Oh, so I think, um, a challenge still is the, the lower energy density, which needs to be overcome. Um, obviously, as I mentioned before, um, sodium ion batteries have a, well, they certainly naturally have a lower energy density compared to lithium just because of the nature of the chemistry. But I think um, through more um, engineering solutions and more technical developments and also maybe more or newer um, battery chemistries in, in the sodium ion battery field, um, the energy density, I'm certain, will still be pushed and might maybe not reach the same level as um, current lithium ion battery NMC chemistries, but definitely will be higher than what we see now. Let's talk about scale because that seems to be a, a big issue in terms of uh, bringing down cost and also uh, a technical challenge. And I, I've interviewed other uh, experts who uh, have talked about how you know, clever engineering, clever uh, factory design is really helping with uh, scaling up. 
and things like dry coating of anodes, that sort of thing. Uh, what about what makes sodium ion batteries uh, so scalable? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sure how they would be more scalable than lithium ion batteries, to be honest. Um, what I would just say is that the, that the manufacturing process is practically the same, which um, you can already take the, all the knowledge we know, uh, all, all the knowledge we have from lithium ion batteries and then transfer it to, to sodium ion batteries. Great. And uh, who are the players in the space? Now you've mentioned a few, uh, Faradian. Uh, out of uh, out of Europe and uh, CATL, uh, mm -hmm. which is the big Chinese player, and has recently announced. And maybe we could talk about uh, CATL because they made a recent announcement. They're going into uh, beginning commercial manufacturing. Um, can you give us an overview of uh, of what they're up to? So obviously, they've been, or from what I read, they have been quite secretive about the battery chemistries, as uh, many of the of the. Um, of the manufacturers, but um, yeah, definitely they announced uh, the commercialization of sodium ion batteries on a large scale. I think up there they want to uh, secure the supply chain up to 2023. I think this is around the, the time they want to, to bring the batteries on the market. And obviously this is amazing. This is, yeah, it's very promising also for um, to see that new battery technologies have a real, um, a real impact and a real application uh, in the current market. And it's not only about lithium ion batteries. Now, um, in the piece that I read about CATL, it mentioned that you know, they were developing their supply chain uh, prior to their commer launching commercially. And uh, is it an advantage that they're already in lithium ion manu uh, battery manufacturing, that the supply chains are quite similar? Um, I would think the supply chains are slightly different because the, the, the minerals would come from different um, places than, than the ones you use for lithium ion batteries. Um, but yeah, I think the, the logistics are already there, the manufacturing plants are already there. So I think they will have an advantage in terms of, uh, in terms of production compared to, for example, Europe. Are there, uh, are there any other firms working on sodium ion batteries that have unique or innovative uh, chemistries or other advantages for their technologies? So we have in France, we have Tiamat, who, um, who commercialized a few years ago cylindrical um, sodium ion batteries. Um, um, and uh, I think they use the sodium uh, vanadium fluorophosphate chemistry, if I, if I remember correctly. And then we have a Faradion, which you already mentioned with the layered battery chemistry. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually very curious to know what the CATL would use in their batteries, but not sure if they will, will tell us anytime soon. Uh, are we aware of any companies in North America that are uh, working on these or maybe Japan and, and Korea that are also working on sodium ion? I have to say, I'm not quite, I haven't heard anything about any commercialized batteries from either from Korea, Japan, or the US, to be quite honest. Great. Well, Laura, thank you very much. This has been very interesting, and uh, we'll be watching the sodium ion battery space with a great interest to see what CATL brings to market next year. Definitely. I'm very curious too. <laughs> thank you very much for the interview.